Hi, thank you for joining me for another reading through the Bible in chronological order. We are on today, Numbers chapter 16 and 17. Now Korah, son of Ishar, son of Kohath, son of Levi, with Dathan and Abiram, sons of Eliab, and On, son of Paluth, sons of Reuben, took 250 prominent Israelite men who were leaders of the community and representatives in the assembly, and they rebelled against Moses. They came together against Moses and Aaron and told them, You have gone too far. Everyone in the entire community is holy. And the Lord is among them. Why then do you exalt yourselves above the Lord's assembly? When Moses heard this, he fell face down. Then he said to Korah and all his followers, Tomorrow morning the Lord will reveal who belongs to him, who was set apart, and the one he will let come near him. He will let the one who chooses come near him. Korah, you and all your followers are to do this. Take fire pans and tomorrow place fire in them and put incense on them before the Lord. Then the man of the Lord, the man the Lord chooses, will be the one who is set apart. It is you Levites who have gone too far. Moses also told Korah, Now listen, Levites, isn't it enough for you that the God of Israel has separated you from the Israelite community <clears throat> to bring you near to himself, to perform the work at the Lord's tabernacle, and to stand before the community to minister to them? He has brought you near, and all you Fellow, all your fellow Levites who are with you, but you are pursuing the priesthood as well. Therefore, it is you and all your followers who have conspired against the Lord. As for Aaron, who is he that you should complain about him? And Moses sent for Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, and they said, But they said, We will not come. It is not enough that you brought us up from the land flowing with milk and honey to kill us in the wilderness. Do you also have to appoint yourself as ruler over us? Furthermore, you didn't bring us to a land flowing with milk and honey or give us an inheritance of fields and vineyards. Will you gouge out the eyes of these men? We will not come. Then Moses became angry and said to the Lord, Don't respect their offering. I have not taken one donkey from them or mistreated a single one of them. So Moses told Korah, you and all your followers are to appear before the Lord tomorrow, you, they, and Aaron. Each of you is to take his fire pan, place incense on it, incense on it, and present his fire pans before the Lord. Two hundred and fifty fire pans. You and Aaron are each to present your fire pan also. So each man took his fire pan, placed fire on it, put incense on it, and stood at the entrance to the tent of meeting along with Moses and Aaron. After Korah assembled the whole community against them at the entrance, to the tent of meeting, the glory of the Lord appeared to the whole community. The Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, Separate yourselves from this community, so I may consume them instantly. But Moses and Aaron faith, fell face down and said, God, God, who gives breath to all, when one man sins, will you vent your wrath on the whole community? The Lord replied to Moses, Tell the community, Get away from the dwellings of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. So Moses got up and went to Dathan and Abiram, and the elders of Israel followed him. He warned the community, Get away now from the tents of these wicked men. Don't touch anything that belongs to them, or you will be swept away because of all their sins. And so they got up from the dwellings of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. Meanwhile, Dathan and Abiram came out and stood at the entrance of their tents with their wives, children, and infants. Then Moses said, this is how you will know that the Lord sent me to do all these things, and that it is, and that it was not of my own will. If these men die naturally, as all people would, and suffer the fate of all, then the Lord has not sent me. But if the Lord brings about something unprecedented, and the ground opens its mouth and swallows them along with all that belongs to them, so that they go down alive into Sheol, then you will know that these men have despised the Lord. And just as he finished speaking these words, the ground beneath them split open. The earth opened its mouth and swallowed them and their households, all Korah's people and all their possessions. They went down alive into Sheol with all that belonged to them. The earth closed over them, and they vanished from the assembly. At their cries, all the people of Israel who were around them fled because they thought, the earth will swallow us too. Fire came out of the from the Lord and consumed the 250 men 
who were presenting the incense. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, Tell Eliezer, son of Aaron, the priest, to remove the fire pans from the burning debris, because they are holy, <clears throat> and scatter the fire far, far away. As for the fire pans of those who sinned at the cost of their own lives, make them into hammered sheets as plating for the altar. For they presented them before the Lord, and the fire pans are holy. They will be assigned to the Israelites. So the priest Eliezer took the bronze fire pans from those who had burned and from those who were burned had presented, and they were hammered into plating for the altar, just as the Lord commanded him through Moses. It was to be a reminder for the Israelites that no unauthorized person outside the lineage of Aaron should approach to offer incense before the Lord and become like Korah and his followers. The next day, the entire Israelite um, community, I'm sorry, I lost my eyes. Okay, the next day, the entire community complained about Moses and Aaron saying, you have killed the Lord's people. When the community assembled against them, Moses and Aaron turned toward the tent of meeting and suddenly the cloud covered it and the Lord's glory appeared. Moses and Aaron went to the front of the tent of meeting and the Lord said to Moses, get away from this community so that I may consume them instantly. But they fell face down. Then Moses told Aaron, take your fire pan, place fire for the altar in it and add incense. Go quickly to the community and make atonement for them because wrath has come from the Lord. The plague has begun. So Aaron took his fire pan as Moses had ordered, ran into the middle of the assembly and saw that the plague had begun among the people. After he added incense, he made atonement for the people and he stood between the dead and the living and the plague was halted. But those who died from the plague numbered 14,700 in addition to those who died because of the Korah incident. Aaron then returned to Moses at the entrance to the tent of meeting since the plague had been altered. Halted. Apologies for my misreadings today. But chapter 15 and 16 show the shift of um, complaint that really begins to unravel in the wilderness wanderings. Once the ten spies place doubt in God, it continues to give the people more and more opportunity to be complainers, and so they do. In fact, chapter 16, with Korah inciting the rebellion, along with Dathan and Abir Abiram, you see the growing anti-Moses sentiment among the people, and it makes Moses angry. He falls face down, showing remorse and sadness as well. But the point that shows in all of this is how Moses acts as an intercessory, an intercessor between the people to provide the intercessory sacrifice that will come between them. And in this case, it's his petition. So one of the lessons that we keep learning about Moses is how he, in many ways, shadows will shadow the true prophet. He will intercede and intercede and intercede again and again for the sins of the world. Join me again tomorrow for another reading through the Bible in chronological order. Thank you.